My name is Timothy Hill, and I help people break up. Two friends from an island in the Caribbean set out on a journey to find inspiring stories told by the persons who live them. So with a camera back and an open mind, they learned that the best part of life is not the destination, but the, the journey. journey. I guess you could say I come from a unique background, but it started out pretty much like your typical um, story childhood. So um, we grew up from a, in from Pontiac, Michigan, it's a small, I guess you could say a mini Detroit at the time, pretty urban. Um, had a group of friends that I hung out with. Um, you know, I had, had family around, cousins, aunts, uncles. And I did like a, a regular kid would do. I mean, I rode my bike, played hoops, um, you know, stuff like that. So um, that's how, I, uh, you know, up, up until the eight, that's how, you know, I'm saying that's what I that's what I knew. So where I was, uh, the crime was getting uh, pretty bad. So my parents uh, decided to move us out to this rural area in Michigan called Emily City. And we were the only blacks black family there um, in a town of 4,000 people. Living up there, I've had uh, all types of experiences um, dealing with racism, discrimination, hate, a lot of that, self-hate, competitiveness, uh, I guess the crafts in the barrel type thing. So, I mean, you can pretty much name it. I feel like I've been through every emotion that a human could probably uh, go through. Uh, I remember a pickup truck coming to our driveway going to burning cross uh, in our yard and my father is telling us to get away from the windows you know stay down another experience is uh me taking on the school bully within the first two weeks um, he had called me a nigger and spit on me and uh you know where i grew up um, i was told i was taught never to, you know never let nobody put their hands on me also how i grew up <laughs> um, i used to be kind of big on uh, National Geographic um, and stuff like that. So um, with that, I kind of learned as a kid that any threat to your environment is a threat to you. In order to remove, uh, get rid of the threat, you have to remove it. And at eight years old, I put it in my head that I was a killer. And I had put it in my head that I was gonna kill him. I was sharpening this pencil underneath my desk uh, with scissors and when we got to recess, I was going to go out there and I was going to go for his juggler, which was the throat. So before that happened, or I got a chance to do that, I actually got pulled in. Uh, me and him both got pulled in uh, while everybody else went out. Our parents was already in the office and... Um, the recess ladies had, you know, kind of told our parents that uh, we were getting into it and things were escalating more and more and that something needed to be done before someone seriously got hurt. So, um, you know, listening to things and mind you, I'm only in the third grade, so eight years old. Um, I kind of already understood how, you know, from how he grew up and he had, uh, like, he, like I said, he was about two or three times my size. He had two uh, brothers playing D1 football. Um, his, their parents were uh, pretty well known in the, in the community, um, had a, a pretty big farm. Um, so, you know what I'm saying? I guess I could kind of understand the privilege that he thought he may have um, and how he may have thought he could just do whatever, whatever he wanted to. Um, but that wasn't the case. Um, and so, when I challenged them and fought back, a lot of other students respected me for that because before I got there, I wasn't the only one. I wasn't the only one he was uh, coming after. So, um, so he apologized, um, and then we actually became 
real good friends. And we went on to play basketball together, win tournaments together, um, you know, hung out at his parents. I knew his family real well. Uh, he knew my family, you know, stuff like that. So um, that just goes to show as an example of how, um, you know, the ignorance of some people of, of being taught how that could uh, play on someone's, you know, personality of, of them not actually knowing what they're doing or saying, especially at a young age like that. Because what he thought, he thought it was cool, you know what I'm saying? He was doing it to try to be cool. And that's not, you know what I'm saying? That's not what it is. Uh, fifth grade, I walked into class. There was a noose sitting on my desk. Um, and no telling who it came from. It could have been a student, could have been a teacher, could have been a janitor. You know, it could have been from anybody, really. And the school I went to, you could bring your gun. So we were a hunting school. Um, you could have your shotgun out in the parking lot in your truck. Um, so, you know, I always had a kind of a fear of, you know, walking out one day and, you know, it might be my last day there. Emmett Till was something that was also um, pretty uh, well spoke about at that time. And I guess you could say that easily could have been me. Emmett Till um, or Tim Hill could have easily been Emmett Till. Seriously, that's just what it was. It made me hard um, to an extent that it left me no feelings. Um, I was numb, even to people. Um, like the, the things that I probably, well, some of the things that I did was not right. I put it like that. But um, in my mind, I justified it by doing bad things to bad people. I kind of felt like I was, I was the karma, you know? So um, somebody would do something bad to somebody, I would go after them. As long as you ain't messing with me or I don't see you mess with nobody else, then you ain't got nothing to worry about. So I was never a troublemaker. I was the answer to the trouble, I guess, if you want to say that. Um, and, and not to say that, you know what I'm saying, I didn't hang around because even when I was up there, um, for my protection, I was somewhat gang affiliated. Um, I hung out, um, well, the Latino community took me in. Um, I got real close with them. And they were, they were, you know, gang affiliated. Um, they wanted to jump me in, but I never let that happen. But, uh, you know, they saw what they, they understood where I was and they knew, you know what I'm saying? you know, some of the things I was going through and they knew I was also by myself. So um, they, they brought me in and um, I got real close with the Latino community. Um, even got to almost, uh, I was speaking Spanish very well at one point. I'm getting up in there, just 12, 13, you know, hormones, you know, start liking girls. And I, you know, was liking a white girl at this time. Um, and one day I walked into class and there was a noose on my desk. So, like I said, I don't know where it came from, who did it, could have been anybody. Um, but I was more so pissed and embarrassed. Um, for the, well, I, was, I wasn't really embarrassed, I was pissed because somebody had the audacity to do that shit. Knowing that, you know what I'm saying, I already kind of already had a little history up until that point of, you know, me dealing with people and how I dealt with them. So, I mean, they, and, and I also had like my one of my good friends at the time was the biggest dude, you know what I'm saying? And in, in probably like two or three of the grades. Um, so, you know, to kind of have an issue with me, you know, you was pretty setting yourself up for some, something to come to you. Um, but it happened. So, um, you know, piss. Now, and, you know, like I said, I, I, I really had no feelings towards anything and I really ain't care. I mean, you can say I just didn't have, I had a, a I don't give a fuck attitude because of where I was. And honestly, I really couldn't give a fuck about how they thought about me because I couldn't do simple things as like eat fried chicken or watermelon without being stereotyped, pointed at, laughed at, you know, something like that. So what I did, I uh, asked my dad to use his truck. And at that time I was already driving. Um, and so, uh, the following day, I used this truck, went and picked her up. She stayed right across from a cemetery. 
um, in which I took her over there and lost my virginity. Um, and then the way the school found out about that is I actually got, we actually got caught by a female cop, um, you know, in the in while, while being out there. Um, and, you know, my parents found out, they caught, <laughs> I think they called me the, the graveyard. <laughs> The graveyard something I, I can't grave I can't remember. <laughs> if you're gonna get me, yeah, I'm not about diverging. And then secondly, like, I mean, me doing a, a grave full of white people that don't like me, you know, I feel at that time didn't like me. It's, I mean, it's, it's I felt it sent the message. So um, like after that, I really didn't have too many more issues, but um, it did change how I dated. Um, uh, like for example, I could like this girl, she could like me. Um, her parents could be all right with it, but she may have a brother, she may have an uncle, she may have, you know, some other relative that don't. And so therefore my safety was always in jeopardy of even trying to, you know, try to get close with, you know what I'm saying, somebody. So I really didn't do it. Um, and most of my uh, actually communication uh, that was done was through writing. And that's how I kind of communicated because I couldn't express my feelings um, verbally. Not to say it was all bad, because um, like I said, my, my life was a lot like Teen Wolf and Michael J. Fox. So uh, if you know the story, you know, Teen Werewolf, they freak out. Some hate him, some love him, some think he's almost a god, you know, um, want to be like them, dress like them, grow froze, you know, stuff like that. Um, but uh, it was it, with the whole message of Michael J. Fox in that movie that I got, it was like the ones that hated him, um, you know, hate him out of ignorance. But if you actually saw who he was, you know what I'm saying, you loved him. And, at the end of it, you know, they, they kind of loved me to a factor where they didn't, they didn't want me to uh, to move. But high school, I ended up moving. Um, and actually, this was crazy for me because it was like my first experiences that integrated back with black people. the research by the people <laughs> that's sad but uh <laughs> but uh i would get a lot of my stuff from the news which is sad too um because we didn't have uh facebook at, at that time um i don't think i was really old enough to really be on a computer like that um so like the stuff i got was really from the news and uh a lot of the stuff that was pr uh, portrayed on the news was negative you know what I'm saying? The negative light, especially at that time. Um, so uh, that also left me with certain feelings, you know what I'm saying, about black people. Because I'm listening, I'm being fed what white people is telling me about black people. And then I'm actually seeing it on the news, the news too. So I go to high school and um, it was more like an upscale, you know, suburb school. Um, and the first thing I'm asked is, um, am I better than, and it's a white kid, am I better than this other kid who's also black um, in basketball? And he only asked that because I was black and I was new to the school. Um, so, you know, that's just kind of showing that um, on the other front, I, uh, you know, still didn't eat. You know, black people thought I was weird. I didn't eat fried chicken, didn't eat watermelon. <laughs> Um, didn't know how to play spades. Typical black stuff, you know, that uh, dominoes. Didn't know how to do that stuff. Integration back with black people. I pretty much, like I said, I was kept to myself. Um, I guess you kind of uh, view me as like a Wolverine character. Like, you know, someone's off on his own, does his own thing, just as long as she don't mess with me, ain't no issues, you know, stuff like that. If I see you messing with somebody else, it's gonna be an issue. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. I, I like I have no problem stepping in on, on that behalf of somebody. So uh 
high school was but high school was cool um i was still sheltered to a degree um uh, by my parents when they wish they tried to shelter me um uh, by keeping me in church and stuff like that but uh you know religion never really stuck with me i never felt uh you know seeing myself having to talk to a man to talk to god when i could just talk to god and at that time uh which i prior to then god was talking to me one-on-one long before you know so i kind of he already kind of told me like the stuff i was going to have to go through um and deal with you know what i'm saying so um you know that was one thing so um high school graduated um then, oh high school very i guess you say pretty smart trigonometry pre-calc uh made it all the way up to those three i think i graduated with three six um and i wasn't a studier um didn't catch me really studying it, it didn't take much for me to learn nothing um college now college when i got to college i moved away from my parents and so all that testosterone all the uh battle i guess you say battles that i've been through um i guess you could say it gave me kind of like a visibility type attitude to where i just did whatever i want you know i did not care i did whatever i wanted i was real well known at college um and it would always be parties and after the game you know i go to where the party people is I don't know these people. Just, just think of a big ass apartment complex and everybody's just throwing parties. I was the type to go into somebody's house, go straight into their refrigerator, make me a drink. I don't know who's in this in this house, but they know who I am um, somehow, some way, um, you know, but I don't know who they are, but I'm able to just go into somebody's refrigerator and just piss me a drink. And, you know, they would up, hey, how you doing, whatever. And I just my drink, drink me, go to the next house. So that was like something like that, uh, to where I guess you could say I felt like I was the exception. Uh, you know, it kind of gave me that 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 persona, I guess. I um, mean, it had a lot to do with the, me being the exception, you know, from my childhood. Black, me being black. People who I was working with was white. Um, they actually got caught with the weed, the money, the scale. They got no jail time. I got two weeks uh, jail time. 